This is Michael Popak with some breaking news in the Trump trials. We've got our first witness who will follow the opening statement starting sometime on Monday. It'll either be Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning. David Pecker, as I had thought, it would be a substantive witness, a roadmap type witness for the jury. David Pecker, the former publisher of the National Enquirer, best friend of Donald Trump, and one of the orchestrators, along with Donald Trump, of the Catch and Kill program, which is at the heart of the business record fraud and election interference case that's being tried against Donald Trump on 34 felony counts. I'm going to talk about David Pecker without laughing. I'm going to talk about his relationship and the role this witness will play in corroborating and tying together other testimony, including that of Michael Cohen. Now, Some people might be shocked that it's David Pecker. I'm not. I think it's the perfect witness because he alone, because of his requirements to tell the truth under oath, the fact that there is a non-prosecution agreement from four years ago, five years ago, with the Manhattan DA's office hanging over his head, the fact that he's no longer with the uh, National Enquirer, the fact that he's given his testimony already to the grand jury, um, and so the prosecutors know everything that he's going to say and will keep him honest on the stand. He's the perfect witness. He corroborates all of uh, Michael Cohen's testimony, Stormy Daniels' ultimate testimony, uh, and other people on the stand about the operation of the Catch and Kill program, which he devised with Donald Trump, Michael Cohen, and himself in uh, Trump Tower a, uh, back, in, um, uh, back in a meeting back in 2016. Uh, So let me talk about David Pecker. David Pecker is also, uh, by the way, you know Donald Trump worries about David Pecker night and day while he's brushing his teeth and before he goes to bed because he's the one that he hasn't bashed him. He can go after Stormy Daniels, and he has Donald Trump mercilessly. He can go after Michael Cohen, and he has mercilessly. But you hear nary a peep about David Pecker. It's almost like Donald Trump is blessing his uh, David Pecker's uh, witness credibility by by not constantly attacking him. That's where we are now. Now listen, I'm going to give you a lot of information on this hot take, but I'm going to pull it all together for you as a, as a viewer guide, a listening guide for the trial that you'll follow hopefully here on the Midas Touch Network. David Pecker, longtime friend of uh, Donald Trump, ran around in South Florida together, the National Enquirer based in Boca Raton, Florida, and owned by a company called America Media International, A. Um, I remember that name. David Pecker is is, um, in discussions with Donald Trump around the time of the 2016 election. And at that time, um, there is a now fateful meeting in Trump Tower in August of 2015 that is attended by David Pecker, Michael Cohen, and called by Donald Trump. Those are the three in the room. And Michael Cohen and David Pecker will now testify about that meeting. In that meeting, according to the grand jury transcripts of David Pecker's own testimony and that of Michael Cohen, this is what happened. Um, There was a meeting in Trump Tower. Uh, It was decided that Pecker would be the eyes and ears of the campaign to look out for bad stories about Donald Trump, including sexual misconduct outside of his marriage, and then find a way to suppress it. Right? That's the election interference. That's the second crime that ratchets this up to a felony in New York. Um, they were. They then decided that the National Enquirer would be reimbursed for any payments that they were that they made to these various people, including women, mainly women, um, as part of this. To, to paraphrase David Pecker, the catch and kill program. But of course, because Donald Trump is cheap and stupid. He failed to make payments at David Pecker, which required Michael Cohen to make the payments to Stormy Daniels, and we're here at a criminal prosecution. Let me keep going. David Pecker knows where all the bodies are buried. He knows, and and Donald Trump knows that he knows. In fact, there is a recorded phone call. We don't yet have a copy, but I assure you will be played in the courtroom. There is a recorded phone call between Michael Cohen, because Michael Cohen recorded a lot of his interactions with Donald Trump, thank God. Michael Cohen in a phone call with Donald Trump in 2018, in which Donald Trump said, wouldn't it be lovely if David Pecker got hit by a truck? 
hit by a truck so that he couldn't ultimately testify about the catch and kill program. I mean, when a jury hears that, talk about bombshell, talk about weather changing uh, evidence. And I've done trial law for a long time. The, the, the jury will be at rapt attention on the edge of their seat and riveted by the testimony of David Pecker. And when they find out later, especially in opening statement, I would assume about hit by a truck, Donald Trump thinks David Pecker is his ultimate undoing in the case. And he would like to see him die by automobile. At least that's the recording. It doesn't even have to be Michael Cohen's testimony. It's, that's what people don't understand about Michael Cohen, at least on the Trump side. It's not Michael Cohen alone. Michael Cohen recorded a lot of conversations. I'm going to play for you one on this hot take where Michael Cohen is having a conversation with Donald Trump about Karen McDougal, the Playboy Playmate that they paid $150,000 to as part of the Catch and Kill program. There were three recipients of the Catch and Kill program. Dino Sarjudin, a doorman who had a story he was going to go public with about a love child of Donald Trump's uh, with a person who worked in the building where he was a doorman. He got 30000 Now He was actually the first, the, the test run for the Catch and Kill program. Kara McDougal, who got $150,000 directly from David Pecker, but didn't get reimbursed by Donald Trump, which led David Pecker to say, I'm out, I'm not paying the next one. And that was Stormy Daniels. And she got paid about uh, 12 days before the election, the 130000 And even Donald Trump wanted not to pay her, just to show you how cheap he is and how it's now coming home to roost in trials like this. There's also uh, re a reporting that Donald Trump told Michael Cohen, and I'm sure he recorded it, uh, why don't we not pay Stormy Daniels, see what happens on election day, and if we get into the White House, we won't have to pay her at all because it won't matter by that point. Again, reinforcing the mens rea, the criminal intent of Donald Trump, that he was committing election interference. See, that is the major issue for the for the prosecutors in this case, to, to hold this case together. It's the glue. They have to tie business record fraud, which is easy to prove, that the payments to Stormy Daniels were recorded as legal expenses, as a reimbursement to Michael Cohen in bonuses. That's the fraud, the way it was recorded. That's a misdemeanor in New York. To ratchet it up to a felony, you have to have that misdemeanor in furtherance of a second crime. Crime doesn't have to be charged. It can be an uncharged crime, but it has to be something like election interference in this case. But you have this testimony from Pecker and from Michael Cohen that it was tied to election interference. David Pecker is also going to testify that to reward him for successfully operating and developing and devising the catch and kill program, Donald Trump paid him off how? By telling him, you you did it. You, you helped me win the White House. Invited him to inauguration day. There's David Pecker on inauguration day. Invited him to the White House for a White House dinner. That's how David Pecker got rewarded, showing again the quid pro quo, the connection between the fraud and election interference that even Donald Trump is acknowledging that David Pecker and the catch and kill program that he participated in helped make him the president. That's the election interference. That's the fraud. So we've got a series of things, including recordings, uh, of Michael Cohen that will be corroborated by David Pecker. We've got the, the August 15th initial meeting, the strategy session to create the Catch and Kill pro program. David Pecker will then testify about the operation of the Catch and Kill program in front of, of a very attentive jury, I assure you. No matter what their makeup, no matter what their political background, their educational background, they will be at rapt attention for David Pecker. That's why he's such a perfect first witness. As I said on Legal AF, you gotta swing for the fences sometimes. You don't wanna bore the jury to death after what will be a scintillating set of opening statements with lots of promises being made. Boom, Manhattan DA put David Becker up there. Not Michael Cohen, as I said. Michael Cohen will come later, after all the other evidence is in, to play some of those recordings, which then the jury will be like, well, I don't care what Michael Cohen's background is. He knows how to operate in a recording machine. He knows how to hit <laughs> play and uh, I mean record and stop and so that's all I need to know for those particular pieces of evidence I'll just show you where Donald Trump is also going to get hogtied at the that's a legal term at the trial 
because of his consistent lies. Um, I'm going to play two clips back to back here. One is Donald Trump has had has told people and has uh, said in the media that he didn't know Karen McDougal, the Playboy Playmate, and doesn't know what anybody's talking about about payments. Really? Michael Cohen recorded a conversation with Donald Trump in which in that conversation, he even talks about a $150,000 payment. He also recorded a conversation where they talked about Stormy Daniels and whether they're going to pay her in cash or not as part of the Catch and Kill program. Let's play that audio clip. What's that, Mike? Great poll, by the way. Yeah. Seen it. Great poll. Making progress. Big time. And you guys are good guys. Oh, Pastor Scott? No. Pastor Scott. What's, what's that? Oh, no. no. Can we use him anymore? Oh, yeah. Hundred, no, you're talking about Mark Burns. He, we told him well, to... I, I don't mean that. Uh, Mark Burns. Can we use him No. Anymore? No. Richard um, Lefrak, I'm sorry, Richard well, Lefrak just called. He just had me have a chance. He had an idea for you. Okay. Um, so we got served from the New York Times. I told you this we were regarding to unseal the divorce papers with Ivana. Um, we're fighting it. Uh, Katowitz is going we to never be able to get that. Never, never. Katowitz doesn't they'll ever be able. They don't have a. Give me your job, please. They don't have a legitimate purpose. And you so, have a, a woman that doesn't want to be Correct. So, so you've been yes, and it's all been going for, a while. for about two, three weeks now. All you have to do is delay it for even after that. It's not going to ever be opened. There's no, there's no purpose for it. Um, told you about Charleston. Um, I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David. You know, so yeah. that I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and spoken to me, and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we funding. That, uh, yes, um, and it's all the stuff, all the stuff, because you know you never know where that company, you never know where he's going to be. Correct. So I'm I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be awesome. What financing? Well, I have to pay you. So no, pay okay. no, 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 no. I got no, no, no. Now we're back. That's that. So you got Donald Trump saying he doesn't know anything about Karen McDougal, but yet there's a recording that says he participated in setting the, the bounty, the hush money payoff amount. And then, of course, you've got the other recordings by Michael Cohen that he's turned over to the prosecutors that are in evidence in this case that Donald Trump has known about forever that he can't really explain, in which he's having conversations with his lawyer, then Michael Cohen, about how to pay off and have it reimbursed. Now let's draw a line under all that. Let's talk about David Pecker's incentive to tell the truth. First of all, he doesn't want to go to jail. Second of all, his company, America Media International, AMI, signed a non-prosecution agreement. We'll put it up on the screen now. The non-prosecution agreement, he said uh, the company c committed that, that if they commit another crime or they violate this non-prosecution agreement, they and the others, including their executives, are going to be prosecuted. So he's got that hanging over his head by the Manhattan DA's office and by the Southern District of New York. Thumbs up on that. So you have that. He also, of course, has already cooperated with the Manhattan DA. He was one of the first to go into the grand jury. So there's grand jury testimony that he has to comply with. Otherwise, he will he will commit perjury and he will be charged with a crime of lying to interfere with an investigation. David Pecker, I don't know about him in the past, but he's going to be a truth teller and a spirit guide for this jury through the conspiracy and the two crimes um, that have been alleged, and he's going to bind and reinforce and bolster the testimony of people like Michael Cohen, even before they take the stand. Now, David Pecker, uh, let me talk about the Catch and Kill program and, and the, the, what he's going to testify to. We know this from his grand jury testimony that's been reported at other, other sources. So we've got that meeting I told you about at the, hot, the top of the hot take, right? We've got the August 2015 meeting in Trump Tower attended by Donald Trump, David Pecker, and Michael Cohen, called by Donald Trump. And in it, and we have two participants who are now going to testify about that consistently, and, and they're not named Donald Trump, that they established the Catch and Kill program, that, that uh, Pecker is going to be the eyes and ears of the campaign, he's going to find these deals, enter into NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, and then make sure they, these stories never see the light of day. First test run was Dino Sajudin, paid by $30,000. 
by apparently the National Enquirer. Dina Sajudin suggests that maybe Michael Cohen was involved. Michael Cohen is denied he was involved. It doesn't matter. It's a payment from the National Enquirer, 30000 to Sajudin, and, that, and he's told that they're going to run that story about the love child or whatever we're going to call it, the out-of-wedlock uh, baby for Donald Trump. That story never sees the light of day. So Juden takes to the media on 2018. He's already giving interviews to George Stephanopoulos, and <laughs> that's Dino Sajudin. Now, there's been reporting that Dino is not going to be a witness in this case for the Manhattan DA. They don't need him. Why? Because because D- uh, David Pecker is a better witness, and he'll be able to talk about Dino Sajudin without bringing in a little bit of a wild card in Dino Sajudin having his 15 minutes of fame on the stand, right? An easier, more compact presentation through David Pecker. That's one. The next up, there were three catch and kill uh, targets. Second, Karen McDougal, Playboy Playmate. She a little more interesting. David Pecker does pay her the $150,000 on the expectation that he'll be repaid by the Trump organization and Donald Trump, that never happens. Hold that thought, put a pin in that for a minute. But they do give her a combination of a non-disclosure agreement, they run like a story about her on the National Enquirer, and they let her do a fitness uh, a fitness column for the National Enquirer, and then they kill that story. Later on, of course, when all these NDAs go by the way, wayside, the story of Karen McDougal comes out. Because David Pecker got, and I'm sorry for the pun, got stiffed by Donald Trump, then he uh, he refused to put up the money for the next one. The next one up was right before the election, really the last days of, of the campaign against Hillary Clinton, when Stormy Daniels was about to go public, and whoosh, they activate the catch and kill program, lasers, boom. And But this time, because Pecker's not gonna lay the money out, Michael Cohen, has to lay the money out for Donald Trump. He reaches out through a, it's sort of brokered by Pecker. Cohen is the one, Cohen signs the non-disclosure agreement with her, uh, which is sort of weird, right? Uh, Except it shows the conspiracy. Trump doesn't want his name on it. So it looks like when you see the NDA, it's just between Cohen and Trump, uh, Cohen and Stormy Daniels. Then the payment of 130,000 comes from Michael Cohen, who according to Michael Cohen, I've heard, took out like a home equity line, paid the 130000 with the expectations that he'd get repaid. These are the checks that form the basis, these payments of the 34 felony counts. The checks in, the checks out, the Stormy Daniels back to Michael Cohen and the rest. Michael Cohen, because he's still in the organization and in good graces, and it's like Donald Trump's consigliere, arranges to get repaid. But the books and records, which Cohen is not responsible for, that's Alan Weisselberg, the chief financial officer twice convicted, spending time right now in Rikers Island for perjury, who's not gonna be testifying in the case. He he makes sure that it's recorded in the books and records of, of the, this New York corporation, that it is legal expenses, legal services Michael Cohen rendered and a bonus related to that for Michael Cohen. Eventually Michael Cohen gets, up, I think he gets up to $400,000 in total payments off of the $130,000 deal. It's like a bonus for the catch and kill. It's the repayment with interest and to true it up so that he doesn't have to pay taxes on it, right? He needs, if it's coming out of his account he and he's getting it back as as legal services, the, the continued conspiracy is, and to show you the mens rea of Donald Trump is that Michael Cohen needs about double that in order to pay the taxes on it because it's going to show his income to Michael Cohen's law firm. You see you see what a tangled web has been woven by Donald Trump as the spider? Here we go. So those payments go out in a, in a little bit of a, a little bit of a vig on top, a little bit of a juice on top for Michael Cohen, and that's the $400,000 in change. All of those checks comprise each count of the 34 counts of the indictment. You see where we're going? So you're going to have Stormy Daniels talk about getting the check and her interaction with Michael Cohen well before Michael Cohen takes the stand. You're going to you're going to see the checks by some records custodian who's going to bring all the checks in. You got David Pecker is going to be the spirit guide about the catch and kill program. You know, you don't even need anybody else. Then you bring in Michael Cohen. Then you bring in Hope Hicks. It's a former press secretary during the 2016 campaign who who we've heard was involved with some of these conversations about the catch and kill program and the and the merit of it, the purpose of it. 
And that's, this is the type of evidence the jury is gonna hear. Real evidence, not social media posts, not rallies, not all this nonsense out in front of the courthouse by Donald Trump. Real evidence, right? Real proof to meet the burden of the prosecution. We'll continue to cover everything. We'll, we'll continue to cover after David Pecker testifies and all the bombshells that are developed during that testimony. One place, Legal AF and on the Midas Touch Network. We're doing Trump trial. We have to. First trial in, ever in our entire constitutional history of a former president being prosecuted. We've got to cover it. It's important. It's not election interference. The only election interference is back in 2016 conducted and committed by Donald Trump. So if you like what we're doing here on a podcast we call Legal AF, you can join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you like what I'm doing, I'm Michael Popak. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a, uh, a comment. It helps with the algorithmic gods to keep me on the air, so to speak. And then uh, you can go over to YouTube for Midas Touch. Free subscribe. Get them to 3 million. And you can look for Michael Popak under contributors or playlists for my full body of work. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, until my next Patreon exclusive content, this is Michael Popak reporting.